Mr. Rosen, on Christmas Eve, your first official day as the acting attorney general, President Trump called you. What did he want to talk about? <clears throat> uh, the same things he was talking about publicly. He, he wanted to talk about that he thought the, uh, the election had been uh, stolen or, or was corrupt and that there was widespread fraud. And I had told him that uh, our reviews had not shown that to be the case. So uh, we had an extended discussion, probably 15, maybe 20 minutes, something like that. Uh, with, with him uh, urging that the Department of Justice should be doing more uh, with regard to election fraud. Did he mention uh, Jeff Clark's name? Yes. Uh, it was just in passing. He made uh, uh, what I regarded as a peculiar reference. I don't remember the exact quote, but it was something about, did I know Jeff Clark or did I know who he was or something like that. And I told him I did. And then the conversation just moved on but when I, I hung up, I was, I was uh, quizzical as to how does the president even know uh, Mr. Clark? I was not aware that they had ever met or that the president had been involved with any of the issues in the civil division. So it was a bit of a surprise when he brought his name up? Yes. So Mr. Clark was the acting head of the civil division and head of environmental and natural resources division at the Department of Justice. Uh, do either of those divisions have any role whatsoever in investigating election fraud, sir? No. And, and to my awareness, uh, Jeff Clark had had no prior involvement of any kind with regard to the work that the department was doing uh, that Attorney General Barr has talked about to this committee. So let's take a minute and explain why the president mentioned Jeff Clark's name to Mr. Rosen here on Christmas Eve. On December 21st, some Republican members of Congress met with President Trump in the White House to talk about overturning the 2020 election. Let's hear Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene talk about how this meeting got set up. I was the only new member at the meeting. I called President Trump on Saturday and, and said, we've got to have a meeting. Uh, there's many of us that feel like this election has been stolen. So on the screen, you'll see that President Trump's chief of staff, Mark Meadows, tweeted about that meeting right after it happened. He said, quote, several members of Congress just finished a meeting in the Oval Office with President Donald Trump preparing to fight back against mounting evidence of voter fraud. Stay tuned. On the same day he met with these Republican members of Congress, President Trump called into a conservative political convention and he used the opportunity to pressure the Department of Justice to investigate his bogus claims. The problem is we need a party that's going to fight, and we have some great congressmen and women that are doing it, and we have others, some great fighters, but we won this in a landslide. They know it, and we need backing from, like, the Justice Department and other people have to finally step up. The Select Committee obtained records from the National Archives that show that Scott Perry was one of the congressmen who joined that meeting. We learned from White House records that you'll now see on the screen that the very next day, Representative Perry returned to the White House. This time, he brought a Justice Department official named Jeffrey Clark. Representative Perry provided the following statement to his local TV affiliate. He said, quote, Throughout the past four years, I've worked with Assistant Attorney General Clark on various legislative matters. When President Trump asked if I would make an introduction, I obliged. But why Jeff Clark? Let's hear Mr. Giuliani explain the kind of person that he and the President wanted at the top of justice. I don't remember ever recommending to anybody that um, Mr. Clark, meaning Jeffrey Clark at DOJ, be given election-related responsibilities. You mean beyond the president? Correct. Well, beyond the president, I do recall saying to people that, um, somebody should be put in charge of the Justice Department who isn't uh, fr uh, frightened of what's going to be done to their reputation. Um, 
because Judge Trump was filled with people like that. Should put somebody that's not frightened of what's going to be done to their reputation. Mr. Donahue, when you told uh, the president that you wouldn't pursue baseless claims of fraud, was it because you were worried about your reputation? No, not at all. Mr. Clark's name uh, was also mentioned in the White House in, in late December and early January as described by a top aide to Mark Meadows, Cassidy Hutchinson. Was it your understanding that Representative Perry was pushing for a specific person to take over the department? He wanted Mr. Clark, Mr. Jeff Clark to take over the Department of Justice. Mr. Rosen, after your call with President Trump on December 24th, you spoke with Mr. Clark on December 26th about his contact with the president. Can you tell us about that conversation? Yes. Um, because I had been quizzical about why his name had come up, I called him and I uh, tried to explore if he would share uh, if there was something I ought to know. And after some back and forth, he acknowledged that shortly before Christmas, he had gone to a meeting in the Oval Office with the President. That, of course, uh, surprised me, and uh, I asked him, how did that happen? And he was defensive. He said it, it had been unplanned, that he had been talking to uh, someone he referred to as uh, General Perry, but I believe as Congressman Perry, and that unbeknownst to him, he was asked to go to a meeting, and he didn't know it, but it turned out it, it was at the Oval, he found himself at the Oval Office, and, uh, and he was apologetic for that. And I said, well, you didn't tell me about it. It wasn't authorized, and you didn't even tell me after the fact. You know, this is not, not appropriate. Uh, but he was contrite and said it had been inadvertent and it would not happen again, and that if anyone asked him to go to such a meeting, he would notify Rich Donahue and me. Is there a policy that governs uh, who, who can have contact directly with the White House? Yes. So across many administrations for, for uh, a long period of time, there's a policy that, uh, particularly with regard to criminal investigations, restricts at both the White House end and the Justice Department end those more sensitive issues to the highest ranks. So for criminal matters, the policy for a long time has been that only the Attorney General and the Deputy Attorney General from the DOJ side can have conversations about criminal matters with the White House, uh, or the Attorney General, the Deputy Attorney General can authorize someone for a specific item with their permission, but the idea is to make sure that the top rung of the Justice Department knows about it and is in the thing to control it and make sure only appropriate things are done. Mr. Ringo, from your perspective, why is it important to have a, a policy like Mr. Rosen just discussed? <laughs> Well, it's critical that the Department of Justice conducts its criminal investigations free from either the reality or any appearance of political interference. And so people can get in trouble uh, if people at the White House are speaking with people at the department. And that's why the purpose of these, these policies uh, is to keep these communications as infrequent and at the highest levels as possible, uh, just to make sure that people who are uh, less careful about it, who don't really understand these implications, such as Mr. Clark, uh, don't run afoul uh, of, the, of those contact policies. Thank you. So the select committee conducted